Yes, yes, you can. Good morning to all of you. Uh, a warm welcome to the AICT headquarters here in New Delhi. Uh, we are here for the launch of the Global Developer Talks AI Fellowship Program, a flagship program that was initiated by AICT during the peak of COVID crisis uh, in 2020. There has been two batches of the program that have run successfully so far. In the first batch that was initiated during the COVID crisis, more than 50,000 students from all over the country uh, in 35 states covering 2,347 2, institutions had applied. The first batch of students delivered the war room software for the national health mission, which saved more than 3 lakh lives during the pandemic. And subsequently, uh, Adar CTO Sri Srika Nadavani saw this project and he realized that uh, we ran out of oxygen in the country in districts where there were hospitals which could provide oxygen to citizens. But there were more than 200 districts in rural and remote areas which didn't have oxygen supply. And Srikant initiated the 10 bed ICU project that now covers nine states in India. It covers 208 rural and 208 rural and remote districts, which are equipped with ICU beds. And the students from the second batch of AICT GDC fellowships upgraded the software with tele ICU capabilities. And now all these district hospitals are connected uh, to the state medical colleges. And the work that has been done by students is recognized as the Unite, recognized by United Nations as the 50th digital public good in the world. With the digital diplomacy uh, that came to fore with the G20 presidency that India held this year, uh, the whole idea of digital public goods is now taking a national and international scene. And a lot of uh, global technology leaders are coming forward to support this initiative that is being started by AICT. Before I uh, hand over the note to Srikan for a keynote address, uh, I would like to play a small video that was uh, shared by Satya Nadalla during his recent India AI tour. Can we play the video? Chance to meet with the Open Healthcare Network folks. That's a community that was born on GitHub. It's fantastic to see what they're doing, right? So they're built an open source EMR system. They even built an open source tele EMR system. Uh, it's just superb. And it's sort of obviously composes with the rest of what's happening in India, which is so unique around these digital public goods. Uh, and the fact that they're now available in 200 plus hospitals across whatever, nine states in India. Uh, and it all was a pandemic project that's just taken on a life of its own. But the cool thing was they all use GitHub Copilot. Everybody who is part of uh, the, uh, the open source community building this is using GitHub Copilot and it's helping them, by the way, do the code, uh, definitely do the testing, uh, and then most importantly, super helpful with docs. Uh, and that's what's really making the community sort of thought that much uh, more productive and it's fantastic to see that. Thank you. Uh, Siddharamji, shall I invite Srikant for the keynote? Yeah, you know? Yes. Srikant, the floor is yours. Uh, if you can take us through the journey and your experience with the students and the GDC program, and can also cover you know, the work in artificial intelligence that's going on, and how this new batch of students that we are going to train, uh, you know, the opportunities to write the AI revolution and the digital public good revolution, and take the standards of engineering education in our country to a global standard. The floor is yours, Srikant. Wonderful to be here. Um, it's, I think, an important morning today uh, when we kick off the GDC Corp for, I think, the third batch and extend the MOU between the AICGE and uh, People First. Uh, firstly, uh, you know, I want to thank, uh, thank uh, Professor Sitaram for taking this initiative 
and taking it forward and uh, really supporting this initiative because I think it's very important. Uh, I also sit on the committee uh, in the Ministry of Education for AI, for the Centers of Excellence, and uh, the kind of work that this GDC batches have been doing with us has been phenomenal, and I'll talk a little bit about that. <clears throat> so I'm super excited to be here today with all of you, and I heard several uh, PCs from the various colleges are also uh, present here today, uh, virtually. So firstly, I feel it is super important. You know, I, I studied, I did my engineering in India at the National Institute of Engineering in Mysore, when I did my master's in the United States and then study, I mean, worked in Silicon Valley for 15 years. What I can tell you is, uh, while the quality of education was very good, you know, my, my ability to do calculus and be able to solve problems which much higher than my peers in the United States, I can tell you when I came out of college, my ability to fit into the workforce and get into the professional environment and contribute was not the same. Uh, so in some sense, there's a little bit of a gap that we need to fill, whether you call it finishing school or you know, whatever you call it. Uh, I think it's important to recognize that we need to ensure that our graduates are able to become productive in the professional environment really fast. And the GDC program, which I've been closely working with for the last uh, at least couple of years, I've seen these students, after they have done their six month training, learning how to <clears throat> program full stack development are way better than the average student that comes out of an engineering college, okay? So in some sense, I think, this is a gap that we need to fill, and I see that the GDC has taken a good effort and more importantly, worked with AICT to see if we can structure this as something that can scale. So I find it very exciting. Uh, I think the combination of taking them to ex through extremely practical aspects of computer programming and full stack development, whether it's the back end, whether it's persistent store, whether it's front end and so on, and actually having them in turn in projects like the 10 bed ICU. The combination is what makes these students learn, uh, you know, uh, things that they need to be ready in a professional environment, right? So that is the first aspect. So I'm super happy with the fact that AICT and, uh, has taken up the GDC program. <laughs> the second thing I would like to say is, you know, Generative AI. So let's talk a little bit about generative AI. I think all of us have used chat GPT. Of course, there is some fear about how students might end up, uh, you know, generating essays and so on and so forth. But more importantly, I think generative AI, you know, like in the industrial revolution, we, uh, you know, figured out about electricity and electricity now hits every aspect of life. I think generative AI is going to be like that in the future almost every aspect of our lives will be touched by generative AI, whether it's our smartphones, whether it is our cars, whether it's our computers, whether it's our, <clears throat> you know, various aspects, even uh, devices, our hospitals, our colleges and schools and so on. So one of the things that these students, these GDC students have been working with, the 10 bed ICU program, you know, uh, uh, Sanjay talked about our 10 bed ICU program. This is a program I kicked off during the COVID days. And within two, two and a half years, we are in 20% of India's districts, uh, creating infrastructure for critical care, but more importantly, created this care platform, EMR platform, electronic medical record platform that was built by the open source community, open healthcare network. And many of them are GDC students who contributed to that. And what I'd like to say is, this, these, there are many gen AI components, generative AI components, whether it is a nurse in an ICU setting where a patient is crashing and she wants to ask a quick question to our AI program to answer. And she could ask in Malayalam, she could ask in Hindi, she could ask in Gujarati, it doesn't matter. It will answer accurately. This was built by GDC students. And this is not something, this is not a final area project that you see a demo of. This has to go live, it has to work out there. 
So I'm super uh, proud of these students and what they've built for us, whether it is, uh, you know, this Aishma tool to answer questions of nurses. We are completely eliminating typing in our care software, and that is again generative AI based. We're working with OpenAI. And one of the things I'd like to highlight, when OpenAI downloaded our care electronic medical record software, which the GDC students have contributed heavily to, they said the, the quality of code of our software, our open source software, is great, better than 75% of Silicon Valley companies, okay, of California Silicon Valley companies. This goes to show the quality of training of these GDC students, as well as their ability to take that training and actually translate it into real professional work that impacts uh, projects like the 10 bed ICU. So super important. And as you saw, Satya Nadella, you know, uh, myself and Bodhi Thomas, who is an active member of this whole network of this GDC program, he and I shared uh, this project with Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft. And out of the number of companies that did demonstrations that day, he chose our project with the GDC interns had helped to highlight in his AI keynote and talk about how large the impact is of uh, this Gen AI tools that we are building <coughs> across the various hospitals in India. So I just want to say that this is a very successful, uh, I think, program that is already creating huge impact. And the uh, industry titans like Satya Nadella are recognizing the quality of the work that's coming out of this. We are also teaching these GDC students, especially when they do these projects, to use to generative AI tools to program. Even programming is going to change. Okay. Programming is not the way we, you know, we learned Java syntax and we try to write programs. Those are too slow. Today, generative AI is going to help us write these programs a lot faster. And we are teaching these GDC students how to do that. Right. And in fact, uh, we could. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a bit of a throat infection. Uh, we could see that these students are getting extremely productive in writing code, in documentation, and in testing because of these AI tools. And I think this will continue as we go along. Last but not least, Nandana and Nilekani and I started the eGovernments Foundation in uh, 20 years ago. And that led us to the sort of the Aadhaar project. I was the CTO, of course, Nandan was cabinet minister in Delhi and so on. Uh, but that also led, besides creating an identity infrastructure, it also led the uh, way for digital public infrastructure in India. And as you saw in the G20, India was in some sense teaching the world how to do digital public infrastructure to be an inclusive platform to bring everybody. So the benefits of government schemes could accrue to all the people as opposed to only some classes of people. And that has reflected in not only Aadhaar, but UPI, which is doing 10 billion transactions a day. Our COVID vaccination program, which you know, vaccinated 2.5 billion people in a matter of two years, ONDC, and so on and so forth. You know, your Digi Yatra that you see today, you walk into an airport and you are able to get in quickly. All of these are examples of India's digital public infrastructure playbook. And these GDC students are actually working with us to implement healthcare in the same playbook, in the same DPI playbook. So we are working with the Aishman Bharat Digital Mission. Our care program as care software is already integrated with ABDM so that all the states where we have launched the care software with the help of these GDC students is now integrated with the national grid on healthcare. So it's uh, so the three points uh, just uh, summarizing number one important for students to have practical experience learn uh, full stack development, but also the understanding of taking things to industry. Number two, building Gen AI products and also using generative AI for coding themselves. Number three, contributing to DPI in an open source manner. One of the things we encourage these students to do is to participate within India to build tools that solve our country's problems. 
In fact, uh, whether it's 10 bed ICU or the other programs, ABDM integration and so on, they're all related to our own needs. So in some sense, I think this is a super important program. Uh, the batch one, as uh, uh, Sanjay mentioned, was important to build the pandemic management system of care. We launched in Ernakulam, managing 300 hospitals in the wave one. Batch two, by wave two, we've built tele-ICU, Aishman Bharat digital uh, mission and so on. And going forward, the wave three, the class of 24, I'm really looking forward to AICTE students from across the country to work with us on generative AI. I want them to build these tools for public good. I want them to support us on the digital public infrastructure and no better institution than AICT as the government's entity looking at engineering colleges to push ahead, not only help these students become fantastic professionals, but also help the country with the kind of projects such as uh, what DPI, the 10 bed ICU project and others are bringing in. Thank you so much. Thank you, Srikant. When they shall I figure out the names of the students who work? Yeah, yes. how did you select consultants? <laughs> Thank you, Srikant. You used your uh, internship portal, no? Uh, no, this was done to the uh, faculty development programs and the institutes directly. So the call goes out to all the institutions uh, and then all no, the... No, not the world one. Uh, I'm talking about the this. This one we will use both. We will use the internship portal and we will announce the student, announce the uh, application portal via email to all heads of institutions. Then uh, in the first year... So you want yet, uh, this is the launch? So this is the launch. So today we will launch and okay. after you launch the launch, we will send out the information. That I think Ramesh ji will coordinate. <coughs> so, sorry. I'll just share my screen and... Uh, this is the old one you're showing. Uh, and the, the new one also. What? Uh, the class of 2023. The students who finished, and then uh, in six states, in 13 universities, 20 institutes have launched the AICT national model curriculum. So that is, uh, so the best students come to the program directly, but those students who are interested but who are not fully skilled now, they learn it as a semester program in the university. And from the semester program, they can then jump. What is going on? Light, you're talking about light, yes, light. light. Yeah, yeah. light. Yeah. Light. So I'll show you the so, screen. What is light? The leadership in leadership uh, teaching excellence program. Leadership in teaching excellence program. Sorry. Yes. How long it is going on? Two years. Two years. What is with GDC only? Yes. 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 Last year, when did we do? Oh, no. It was going on. The first batch was going on, no? I just yeah. now completed. It's not an annual program, so it was going on. It's a continuous, continuous uh, program. Yeah. Last year we didn't do anything. No, no, no. no. So First, last year we launched and we came went. in just last year. So that we, we missed that annual cycle window. This year we'll catch the annual cycle window. The time you joined and the annual admissions, that window was missed. So this was what Srikant was talking about. The first batch of students built the digital war rooms that ran the COVID crisis. We launched the program in this very same room. The second batch of students, they worked with the e governance foundation with Srikant and build the tele ICU systems. And then they build the AI programs that is now working in uh, with open AI. So with the new batch of students, we will continue to build on this. We will continue to take the top 100 students from the country and they will continue to work on some of the new products that Srikant was talking about. How can you use uh, AI vision? How can you use AI agents? And how can you transform India with AI? That's the primary thing. And the e-governance competition also absorbs these students as uh, full-time engineers post their internship. So these students continue to build and contribute into the digital public good story. So some key people are also supporting this. Uh, along with Srikant, there is Pramod Varma. So Pramod architected uh, Ada and then was the architect for uh, India Stack. So Srikant introduced, the, introduced us to like Pramod. And then uh, Mekin was the CTO at Flipkart. And so quite some people from the industry are also supporting this. We've done uh, two batch, three batches now, and now we are going to announce the class of 2024. But uh, before we announce the class of 2024, uh, AICT has this leadership in teaching excellence program where uh, faculty under the Atal Academy are also given training in this model curriculum. And universities are encouraged to 
pass the model curriculum in their academic councils and integrate that. Okay, but I, I have no good this program. What is the connection with GDC? I'm not following that. GDC is the main flagship program. Yes. Yeah. I think you might have to yes, sir. I'll, I'll, I'll. bring that up. Yes. yes. So this is the, I'll read the hints of the vice chancellors first uh, who have launched the program in their universities. Can you see this? Should I increase the size of it? Increase the size. Slightly better. Okay. So I'll just read out the names of the vice chancellors and the certificates will be issued to them. And then we, so batch one certificates were issued already. This is the next batch of vice chancellors who've done this. So Professor D. Ravindra from Osmani University, Dr. Subhash R. Chaudhary from Rashtragan Tukdoji Maharaj University in Nagpur, Professor Kata Narasimha Reddy from JNTU Hyderabad, Dr. R. Velraj from Anna University, Dr. D. T. Shake from Shivaji University, Kolapur, Dr. Suresh Gosavi from Savitri Bai Phule, Pune University, Professor Praful Kumar Udani from Sankalchan Patel University in Gujarat, Dr. Onkar Singh from Veer Madhav Singh Bandari, Uttarakhand Technical University, Dr. Kharbari Kele from Dr. Baba Sab Ambedkar Technical University, Batu, Dr. Vishwadi Chatterjee from University of Engineering and Management, Jaipur, Dr. Sandeep Sachedi from Marwadi University, Sri Sandeep Kundu from West Bengal State Technical for uh, Vocational Education. So one Vocational Education Council has also implemented the ICT National Curriculum and Professor Harilal Menon from Goa University. These are the 13 vice chancellors who've taken the lead and implemented the model curriculum in their universities. Under these universities, then there are many affiliated colleges where the faculty have completed their training program. Model curriculum? For the full stack web development. Full stack? Web development. The software that is being, the, the curriculum that was trained, the students are getting trained under. It's a 13 credit curriculum. And it is approved as a minor degree curriculum by the AICT Council. Um, exactly. Ah, yes. So this was the time when there was a major degree, minor degree, and that integration happened. So these are the faculty and the heads of institutes <coughs> who've been able to implement. From Chaitanya Bharati Institute of Technology, Hyderabad. So this is a, this is under, for example, JNTU Hyderabad. Uh, Professor C. V. Narasimulu, G. H. Raisoni College of Engineering, Dr. Sachin Untwale. Narayanama Institute of Technology under JNTU Hyderabad, Dr. So you are closely working with this faculty. Yes. Yeah. And so how do you know that others have not followed? Because the administrative approvals have not come from the universities. The university academy. Yeah, how do you know? Asking you. They may not even come to you. <laughs> no, they, they, they would have followed a, a curriculum if it is given to them. How yeah. do you know that they are not following this model curriculum on development stuff? Because after the curriculum is approved, the faculty training happens. And once the faculty is trained by Atal Academy, that is when the classes start. So the number of faculty who is trained... Atal Academy? You are silent. Who should be talking about that? <laughs> Are you doing this or... Uh, huh? He is telling you. No, sir. For the time being, it was, we were not doing it. It's fine. No, sir, we were not doing it. That's not exactly We were waiting for the launch. We were waiting for the launch for this batch, no, sir. The last batch was going on, wherein Adel Academy was not. This is ridiculous. See, you are pleased to understand. You are sitting there. <laughs> he is telling you a scheme which is, should be implemented and help you. Uh, so we are waiting for the launch. Actually, we are waiting for the, the next batch is getting announced today, sir. Applications is not that, Nothing to do with that. What did we do? You see, so Jaya from Hindustan College of Engineering and Technology, Coimbatore, Dr. L. V. Narsimha Prasad from IARE Hyderabad, Dr. Mohan Manroti from Kitts College of Engineering, Srinivasa Rao from Malareti College of Engineering, Hyderabad, Govind Narayan Kulkarni from... Okay, what I'm trying to say is, he is much more closer with that than uh, any of our officers. None of you know about uh, <laughs> this is sad. Dr. Uh, Sai Narayan Reddy from Shreyas Institute, Dr. J.V.R. Ravindra from Vardhaman College, Shamsabad. Dr. D.J. Shah from Sankalpan Central College of Engineering, Vishnagar. Dr. Sandeep Vijay from Pula Institute. Dr. B.F. Jogi from Batu. Professor Bishwajit Chatterjee from University of Engineering and Management, Jaipur. 
Mr. Naresh Jadeja from Marwad University, Mr. Mukhopadhyay from JA School of Polytechnic, Dr. B. Lohani from Goa College of Engineering, Professor Durga Devi from Chaitanya Bharati Institute of Technology, Hyderabad, Professor Deepthi Teng and Professor Aditya Khan from GH Raisoni, Nag Nagpur, Professor M. Lalitha from Narayanama Institute of Technology for Women under JNTU, Hyderabad, Professor Yamuna and Professor Kartigayan from Hindustan College of Engineering, Coimbatore, Dr. Padmaja from IARE, Hyderabad, Professor Samir Patel from Kids College of Engineering, Dr. Shanti and Dr. Rupa from Malaredi College of Engineering, Mr. Shailesh Galande from Chintri, Chintri Chinchwad College of Engineering, Pune, Professor Joshi from Shreyas Institute of Technology, Professor Ganesh and Professor Prajwal from Vartman College of Engineering, Shamsabad, and Professor Patel Mehul Kumar from Sangalchand College of Engineering, Visnagar. A few more faculty, Professor uh, Ahmad Jahal from Tula S Institute, Daradun, Professor Sanjay from Batu, Professor Jyoti and Professor Tejas from University of Engineering and Management, Jaipur and Marwadi University, respectively. Professor Ria from JA School of Polytechnic and Dr. Nilesh from Goa College of Engineering, Goa. And all of these are in computer science? Yes, all of these are computer science faculty. They've completed the training successfully under the Atal Academy. For, for Atal Academy, the yes. thousands of courses. Yeah. Okay, this is on what course? This is a program where the full stack development is oh, done under the, N, under the NEP model. It's a learner-centered model that is so implemented. So, pull out the full stack development model curriculum and so on. Yeah. Uh, so, then this is the 14 students, uh, the 15 students who worked with Srikant to build the uh, features that he showed to Sam Altman at OpenAI and the features that were built for the Kelly ICU that is now running in the nine states in India. So, these students were selected from 48,000 applicants. That is one project they done. Yes. Yeah. It's a continuous work. So it's been going on since the COVID time. So four years, it has been continuous. 208 weeks have passed. Every week, our engineering it is students... commercially now... Yes, no, no, it is live running. So till now, I think... And is it commercially done? Yes, yes, in nine states. Nine states in the country, 208 districts, covering 2,000 ICU beds. It's been in the... the platform yes. is completely ready and it is... Fully working live, live under nine states. Yes. So, what is the financial model? Uh, the states are funding the uh, cost of the salary for the medical staff, as always. The uh, infrastructure that was built for the ICUs, uh, Mr. Vinod Khosla, he wrote the largest check. Uh, and then there were funds from HDFC Bank and other donors. These were used to deploy the ICU beds by Srikant. Very good. Yeah. So 40 lakhs is the cost that Srikant incurred per district. So in each hospital, 10 ICU beds are kept. Each ICU bed costs 4 lakh rupees. And the infrastructure is connected because it is a remote hospital. So you need to bring this case study yes. properly. Yes. Completely capture that. Then, you know, see, Satya Nadella is saying, but AICT is not saying anything. Sir, we've been very silent about the work actually. We've not uh, gone and told anybody. So, <laughs> <laughs> we've been very silent. Because this is our student, no? This is our student. We need to project them. These yeah, are no, no, I, absolutely. I'm going to say, Professor Sitaram is absolutely right. Sir, I would suggest if you can also do like a video, because these are AICT students who have built large chunks of this project and it's being launched everywhere across the country. Nine, nine to 10 states, it's launched. So it would be wonderful if AICT puts out something, a video yes. uh, or on the website. Or video, like no, so, so video. Project, because re recently in Akhila Bharat Shiksha Samagam, we were around uh, uh, Institute Innovation Council activities. We were looking for such case studies. And we had put 200 projects, not just this one. See, so this is missed. This is an important project. 200 of projects, which are of similar nature mm. and different areas. We have built and displayed in the kilowatt sector. Correct. So why we did not invite them? <laughs> That's the question. Okay. okay. So, so these are the names of students. Uh, and then I'll hand it over to you. <coughs> and then we'll hand it over to you for your comments. So Akash Singh from Lakshmi Narayan College of Engineering, College of Technology. Abhiday Gupta from uh, Bellur Institute of Technology. Aryan Patel from Veer Sundra Sai University of Technology, Burla. Ashish Kumar from Sri Shankaracharya Group of Institutions, Gokul Ram from Sri Sivasubramanian Nadar College of Engineering, in Kerala, 
no, no, no. Yeah, no. That is another engineering college. Um, so, this one, I think, is in Tamil Nadu. Uh, Ishwan, Ishan Mishra from Indian Institute of Information Technology, Kalyani. Mohammad Rabil K from St. Joseph's College of Engineering. Naman Gogia from Delhi Technological University. Pragati Bhattad and Pranshu Agar from, from uh, Vellur Institute of Technology. Ritesh Agarwal from Maharaja Surajmal Institute of Technology. Ritwik Nishad from Vellur Institute of Technology. Shivank Kakka from Navarachana University. Siddharth Nikhil from Vellur Institute of Technology. And finally, Suri Shankar Das from JP Institute of Information Technology. These are the class of 2023, 2023 students and the faculty members who are the brand ambassadors of AICT, the heads of institutes, and the vice chancellors who are trying to take the national standard to higher and higher levels. And with the new launch of the GDC AI fellowships program, this program is entering a new stage. So the world of generative AI is now open. Artificial intelligence is the new revolution out there. And the students will be now able to upgrade the software used in the healthcare systems with new tools of artificial intelligence to increase the healthcare delivery in our country. Uh, and just to, just to wrap up before I say, uh, the, the whole game of digital public goods is now going up with India taking the lead in the G20 summit. And many nations are looking to do their digital transformations like India has done with Aadhaar and UPI. So Pramod Verma, who was the architect, he believes that 50 to 100 countries may adopt the India model that we are building. And now we are joining the students straight into this program. So this is the revolution that is underway. And uh, we look forward to your comments and uh, the yes. signing of the MOU and uh, sure. the program. Thank you. So you're able to hear me? Yeah, thank you. So see Srikan Nadamani, the founding CTO and Adha of Adhar. Sanjay Vijay Kumarji, you pick me first and uh, all our colleagues and friends. First of all, it's a great pleasure to know uh, Global Digital Cups AI Fellowship was very successful in year 22 and 23, both years. And I'm also very happy to see this collaboration with Pupil First has yielded good results. And now it has been implemented in Many hospitals. 200 but, million district hospitals. Yeah, and, but in 90 states. 90. So this clearly, you know, represents a significant milestone in our journey together. And uh, particularly, you know, harnessing the young people capability and also for the betterment of society. The two objectives we are able to fulfill. But what I would like to say so totally today we graduate 1.3 million engineering graduates every year. And majority of these, including some of you, including Madam Mudi, yourself and myself, are all graduates of the same system. Yes. As uh, Srikanth was saying, so we were so good in uh, calculus and, and there was also some gap. But this gap continues to exist with a kind of technology disruption. This continues whether in the uh, 80s I was not knowing something and uh, in the 90s something else, uh, IT, and in 2000 and uh, 2020, definitely there will be a, a lot of gap, particularly with the AI coming. And because artificial intelligence can take the role of a, an artist, uh, a poet, yes. as well as a programmer, a musician. Yes. That means very clearly shows that uh, it has a better capability than uh, many human beings the speed at which it can do it. But at the same time, it is created by us only. So we don't need to be scared enough to read about it. Uh, it is betterment for our own society and this thing, it has to be actually used. And, uh, and ethical use is also very, very important. But we need to also inculcate some ethical practices in our young people, particularly when AI holds the immense potential to address many of the challenging yes. problems which is our society is facing. So, in this direction, I would like to tell you the contribution of AICT in two, specifically both uh, Shikant and also all the people on the portal today has joined, should know that AICT's internship portal is very large. 
totally we have created 50 lakhs trained 50 lakh students have gone through this act portal system trained in different companies how many 75000 companies are already on the portal 75000 companies including companies like google microsoft and also why because the, i wanted to tell you my uh, the uh, so these are all very successfully the completed their projects delivered and moved on and got better placement some of them placed with the same companies where they did this internship and uh, last year onwards we have also announced this internship as a mandatory second point on ai what aict is doing i think some of you should look at the new tool what aict has developed internally with these students okay is the anuvadini today anuvadini is I, I, we have already already created a new section 8 company with four of us uh, professor sasrabuddi myself and uh, professor uh, dr chamu shastri and uh, dr buddha chandrashekar this is a new company which is created already generated about 15 crores of revenue from different government agencies to do not just the translation work this is very advanced tool based on ai okay uh, the applications are mind boggling so it can live translate the video my prime minister speech can be simultaneously put into uh, 10 languages okay speech in, in real time similarly you know it can create the artistic work and uh, uh, text to video uh, directions all that almost similar to the competitive softwares like soro has been developed by this group at ACT. so this is uh, and also now being popularly used for all our translational work and many other you know courts are using it for example high court of kerala is using translation work from uh, Malayalam to other languages and Malayalam to English, English to Malayalam mm. are, are already officially being used. Okay, and similarly, uh, right now, Supreme Court is also looking at our court. Parliament is going to consider the exam. I mean, there is already a trial is going on. Mm. So, Parliament is also going to use this Anuvadini tool. A tool. Uh, a tool. It, this is a completely AI tool, and as, as I told you, it is not just a, a text to text. It is multiple features. And mind boggling and it is uh, some of you should look at it maybe if you get a yes. chance uh, yes. listen to that because uh, what they have created uh, is something out of the box and it's been now used elsewhere so coming back to this fellowship you know it's a very good initiative excellent initiative and i think uh, we need to do it at large numbers as yes. i told you yeah <laughs> we have out of these 1.25 million students who are graduating every year, almost 50% or 30% or 40 45% of students are in the areas of emerging areas, mm. whether it is computer science, uh, yeah. data science, yeah. AI, you know, because they have multiple nomenclatures, almost leading to similar kind of a thing. So we have to make them, but at the same time, we have to also graduate with AI, as you rightly said. That's why you are also coming with AI, because most of the coding is done by now. <laughs> AI chatbots, much better than human beings. Maybe, maybe prompt engineering is going to take the lead. Yes. Okay. Where you are going to now, uh, English is going to be more powerful. Yes. How yes. to ask questions so yes. that yes. you can you can actually create your own yeah. what you want to do. So that kind of a education is also being done, and we have created a very high power committee to look at. How AI is going to transform our education? Mm. We have already got the detailed report, and uh, that report is under the implementation stage, not just in AICTA, entire the Ministry of Education. So AICT students, uh, performance-wise, you know, are learning-wise, uh, because of the model curriculum continuously being updated, and a lot of industry interaction is happening, yes. and through our Institute Innovation Councils. Okay, a lot of industry people, whether it is in software, hardware, or even in core engineering, all are actually getting working together. 
So this collaboration has actually changed the way our students are seeing the real life. Yes. So I don't think, you know, 10 years uh, back what you are talking about quality, I think the qualities are reasonably good because I see placements are coming down in IITs, but not much in our colleges. Let me answer, can you? <laughs> our colleges are reasonably getting placed, maybe not at a package what IITs used to get, but uh, that, that is because our curriculum is much more rigorously reviewed and uh, modified than in IIT. Because I'm telling you that as a director of an IIT. Because there one person is teaching and he is going to teach uh, sometimes till his retirement. And uh, whatever he, how he adopts, it all depends on that course. So today our semiconductor uh, curriculum, what we have developed at AACT is one of the best and many of the IITs have adopted. Okay. At least two, three IITs, our knowledge, I know it and traditional technical industry. And then I'm So well, this is the way, you know, ACT institutions are, are moving ahead. But as you said, you know, this initiative to move to AI, not only just in programming, mm -hmm. which is a good initiative, I think uh, we support you. I, I want my officers to look at very clearly the success story of the People First program. First should be brought out very clear, clearly and in consultation with uh, Sanjay Vijay Kumarji. Okay. So that, uh, no, because he is completely updated when compared to uh, some of you. I think that's not actually. Because this, if this is a collaboration, it has to be a collaboration. Okay. We should handhold them in every step. And that's where the connectivity comes. It means you are actually being in touch with the colleges and uh, students. And uh, every meeting, I think some of you should be present. It is not just Vijay Kumar does the meeting with the colleges and the students. Because uh, then they know that they will also take it seriously. More, and it's better to do that. So definitely AI is going to change the way we function. I think we need to educate the majority of our students with this. So today morning also I was saying, Eject AI has announced, based on our general circular, we said 18 to 20 credits you know, in mm -hmm. data science and AI can be given to core engineering students. They started offering this to civil engineering, mechanical yes. engineering students yeah. at Eject AI. Yes. Today's newspaper was that. So that means they are very proactive. So we have made now a mandatory internship, then a minor degree in any areas, in you know, emerging areas, yes. students from core engineering take. Right. So core engineering needs to be popularized. Mm -hmm. Even my submission to you is here, as you're moving into AI, so instead of only focusing on computer science students, okay, because uh, now the programming and uh, those skills are no more so much relevant. But what is more relevant is the realistic problems of how to solve society it. and how to solve it and the, the concepts of what they learn in core engineering are becoming very more and more important yes. so i think this must be expanded to all core engineering students okay why because they, anyway you are picking the best and you are only picking maybe 100 mm -hmm. so 100 to find from to 1.25 million is not a difficult thing okay <laughs> so please expand this expand. to okay. the core engineering students sure. because you might find a, a very good student uh, and uh, mechanical or electrical engineering or yes. electronics yeah. uh, to do this uh, with the knowledge of their core branch. Core branch. Yeah. So they will be in a position to put the entire perspective in a different way rather than just coding. Sure. sure. So I submit that and yes. I, I also today I'll tell my officers to get involved more. I want to see, you know, maybe we can expand this. Okay, same kind of projects to larger institutions. Yes. Through our support and funding. Yes. It's, we have to give an opportunity to young people who are talented to a larger number. He may be able to only handle 100, but you can create uh, several other groups learning from this experiment. That is what, that is what for we are here. See, successful programs should be expanded to a larger scale under his, under their guidance and suggestions. 
and let them let them continue to do 100 or 200 or 250 what they are capable of doing but we have been a lot of work that's what i wanted to see and that has not been done in this particular case this programming we could have expanded it to a lot of other uh, applications and handled them guide them and uh, there would be several people would definitely would have come from okay this is a kind of a problem we have to do it and this is the way uh, sanjay has done it and then uh, similar can we replicate that at several locations at several institutions on several different topics okay so he focused on healthcare it could be on something else so coming to public digital infrastructure i would like to give uh, aict along with ministry of education has also created a new digital infrastructure now we are partner to that that is called apar apar uh, automated permanent academic account registry automated permanent academic account registry what is this apar apar is an id given to every student in our country starting from balavatika that is ukg lkg to phd mm -hmm. you will have a unique id and it is not a theory anymore it is not a, a scheme just now it is one though started 3 months back already 28.5 crore student oh. have already registered on this and 28.5 crore student have a unique id this unique id along with academic bank of credits that means they can store their credits earned from any colleges or any uh, private institution on their uh, digital space and this apar id academic bank of credits national credit framework will actually give a lot of flexibility for students to choose their own courses yes. and maybe accumulate the day is not far away so, uh, they can even accumulate all these from different different institutions and get a degree but that stage is not reached but hopefully that will That's that is the goal That's that is the vision of this so this is a very unique uh, this one another very large public digital infrastructure in the field of education is coming is on the skill india digital this is going to have a close to about 60 crores there you know all engineering graduates all uh, high school students and everybody will be on that portal skill india digital portal okay so because skilling reskilling and upskilling is becoming continuous it is, it is a lifelong learning is a reality now so everybody is going to be on that portal there are a lot of avenue and so provided what are the courses on what kind of jobs are available so it is a both as a career portal as well as a uh, training portal right. so this is what has been done by ministry of skill development msde Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. Uh, this is a Skill India Digital. So, like this, you know, these uh, large uh, digital, uh, public digital infrastructures have been developed, and uh, cyber security is going to be a huge issue. So, again, we are also doing a lot of cyber security projects with NCC, NCC IPS, okay, which is our uh, ministry's uh, intelligence group, okay. Uh, so we are actually conducting a lot of hackathons okay smart india is a hackathon also does yeah. majority of these projects that's why i said there are a lot of talent smart india hackathon this time we have received 55000 ideas new ideas and all these problem statement came from the line ministries see so 28 line ministries have funded the prizes and given the problem statement and our kids uh, start solving them for 36 hours non stop in software edition and 5 days non stop in hardware edition so such a large kind of training has happened uh, yeah, across the country and as i also want to tell you institute of innovation council the activities are also increasing today we have as of today 10000 institute innovation councils in 10000 institutions of our aict okay so we wanted to touch that this this what it does us is they also bring awareness on ip literacy intellectual property literacy courses are also been available for self learning through swayam platform and we are also bringing you know skill courses to them yeah. and these skill courses are also brought on swayam platform swayam plus we have launched now 
if you some of you may not know this also because Swayam Plus is basically an extension of NPTEL program. Mm. So now NPTEL is merged into this. About uh, uh, nine different agencies are developing these course materials on Swayam Plus. Swayam Plus involves the companies like Microsoft, Google also. The skill courses are also now on the Swayam platform. They can put it up to 40% of oh, the credits great. students can earn through these skill courses as well as Swaim platform. Swaim is the largest books platform. My, some of the courses which are there are better than Coursera as well as uh, MIT's uh, books platform. Okay, I think you know ACT's role in the last about five to six years, from 2017 onwards, some the creation of digital public infrastructure in terms of teaching learning in terms of uh, identification and uh, a phenomenon. And I think uh, this will add and if we can add people like you more and more into our network yes. so that you know, we can expand these activities into much more problem solving and uh, make our students to embark on a journey uh, completely different. And these guys can be the leaders the world already you know if you see our engineers are everywhere you show me a company which doesn't have an indian uh, uh, engineer who has at least got one degree from india okay and in all meetings wherever i go i ask a question how many of you are from iits hardly zero hands will go up oh how many are aact approved institution all uh, hundred or thousand people sitting in the hall raises their hand engineers so that clearly shows that there is a greater impact and today we are and there is only one hope where uh, we can become a leader uh, is in STEM areas that is to engineering because we have created such large number of institutions in the 80s which have now matured and graduated to a level where we can convert them into fairly valuable resources. That's all I have to say and again welcome you for this particular interaction. Uh, with the ICT, I'm very happy that uh, you are much more updated and working directly with our institutions, which is excellent. We welcome you that, but you know, keep us informed so that you know, we can expand such activities with your suggestions, guidance to a larger number of institutions where we can we have a wherewithals to train bigger numbers. I've given you many many successful examples already. Yes. Okay, whether it is or anything. So one of those, this also can be done. So I'm very happy to launch this ACT digital yes. GDC. Yeah, I finished 24, 25. Yes. And uh, hopefully we will we request you to, again, I wanted to tell you, go through our internship portal where you will definitely find, because internship is also advertised all to all colleges. Okay. So let's not repeat uh, some of these efforts. Yes. Otherwise, you have to spend a lot of time yeah. in sending each individual mails, attend to it. I know in, in search for talent, uh, all, all efforts are good, but I, I somehow feel that uh, our internship portal is searching talent also is very easy sure. because you can post it, you can invite them and uh, select them, you know, highly talented, you can interview them also. Yes. Yeah, so it's possible. Yes. You know. We will try, try, to, try, try, try to look at that. Then you know, then there will be a collaboration with that group also. So that's why that is what I most strongly feel. So thank you very much. And here is the future. <laughs> Powered by AI. Uh, good. Good luck. Good luck to you. Yes. Namaskar. Jai Hind. We will sign the. Yeah. 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 Srikant, uh, would you like to uh, respond and share your thoughts to Chairman's comments? No, I, 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 I'm uh, actually very impressed with the broad strategy that the that Professor uh, Sitaram has outlined for AICT in taking GDC forward and also scaling it. You know, like he's mentioned, hundred while it is good, there are a lot more students who would be interested. Why? While, while you are all speaking, lots of, lot, lots of the professors have been uh, talking to me on on the chat saying we would like to have, be part of the program and uh, i can see the interest levels are high we need to 
uh, scale it like the professor is mentioning. So uh, I think it's a wonderful opportunity. So I'm glad to be part of this and uh, we are extending this for another three years, the MOU. MOU. Look forward to working with the AICT. Thank you, Srikan. With this, uh, this sign Mesh, you have a big responsibility to <laughs> bring this to a different scale. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's why we're making you to sign the <laughs> <laughs> See, there are many people are saying they are yes, uh, chat me, but they all want to be part of it. Yes, Take note of that. Yes, sir. And immediately put a team, work with him, you know, he'll guide you. Other, I mean, he'll let him select what he wants from yes. our ACT institutions. But in addition to that, yes. you should create a parallel number because it is no, it's like, you know, we have created IITs. So yeah. We have shown now. Yes. So these graduates are not relevant because I will tell you frankly, they are ni neither in the startup uh, process. Mm. Okay, IIT graduates. Mm. I, I have yesterday I have seen. Okay, then in the, we have looked at all the startups one lakh forty five thousand. Okay, we can look at these IIT's contributions maybe in numbers, small numbers. Oh. All are from IIT institutions mm. because those are the people who are ready to take risks. IITs will get a package, no? They will run away with the package. <laughs> <laughs> so my, I, we have looked at very carefully these numbers. Actually, we like, who are the star, who are oh. the people who are going to do a start? And all the research parks, uh, uh, Shikam, you know, at IITs, not even one IIT graduate, undergraduate, he started a startup in a research parks. Not even. I see. Oh wow. Not even one. I'm telling you. See, I, uh, government has funded almost like each one of them 200 crores uh, wow. at seven or 10 locations. Okay, so you look at it, but all, all the students who start does the startup there are engineers, but from other colleges. Second mm. and third grade in England. Why, why that only? I will tell you, I was with Somanath, huh. I asked him. Who are your employees? How many of uh, your uh, scientists you have done now? Your world standard now. Yes. Okay. How many of your students are IITs graduates? He says zero. Not even one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, the, the director Isro was from a small engineering college. I think no, no, Trichy or someplace no, like that. Chairman, chairman Isro is from TKM College, a private engineering college in Kerala. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the see what I'm what I'm trying to tell you is that in the 80s what that we started a journey of, of opening of or mushrooming of engineering colleges and actually is paid off well. Yes. They, today yes. our the hunger is there. Training. The hunger is there in students in the second tier, third tier. They will work hard. Yes, yes. And uh, I mean, th that number also, man, today we are the largest producer of engineering graduates in the world. We have beat uh, China. Hello, uh, already, China. So we have greater potential also, eh? because the entire world is aging society. Ours is the young people. Yes. So we have a greater demographic dividend. I think we, we can hit Absolutely. this. That's why this year, you know, we have removed the moratorium of engineering colleges. Anybody can open any new program. Mm. Any new to no no to start more engineering colleges. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that the limit was taken away. Huh? Yes. We, we got the, because the jobs are not only for India today. See, jobs are across the world. Mm. Uh, and today, uh, 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 Japanese uh, are asking us, sir. Japanese embassy has written me an email. So we want to take your engineering graduates to Japan because they're all aging society. They yes. want to even sustain their infrastructure. They need our engineers. Yeah. And ours is the best because all of these guys, fellows speak English and has a good mathematics background. So just you need to up them. So today with all of these innovation activities and they are quite uh, positive ones. And they've opened up. So I think uh, it's a good a great for India. Pro Professor Sitaram, just one small request. While you were speaking, a lot of the professors were asking me, how do we participate? So I just quickly created a link and say, please enter your details. Sanjay will get in touch. His team will get in touch. If that link uh, I've just posted, if you can just send it out because it's going to, once we close this meeting, the link will go away. If one of you can just uh, share it with all the colleges, uh, yeah. all the people who are yeah, interested. Yes. Could. See, Ramesh, I have given you specifically, this needs to be expanded. 
Yes. To a large than she, she comes, will be there. You take his number, yes. talk to him. He will actually connect you to the world's top best. <laughs> and also all problems, yes. statements will also be given, given to them. Yes. So let them participate yes. in more numbers. Yes. Because otherwise, you know, um, uh, Sanjay's work will not be noticed there. Yes. 100 people <laughs> in, in 1.25 million, yeah. it will be like IITs. Yeah. So the message I think is uh, very clear. Uh, you know, we will uh, take it to the next orbit exactly. you know, under your leadership and with Ramesh and with Funding Sri is no problem. Okay. Let me also tell you, funding is not a total issue. Okay. Okay. AICT will ready to put in uh, whatever, whatever is required to be done. Okay. Resources. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, close, for joining uh, the launch of the GDC AI Fellowships. We will be sending out the emails uh, to the institutions from AICT, from uh, Sri uh, Ramesh Unikrishnan's office. And then we will look forward to see all of you.